Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, our handle's all dry, and I gotta say, it's looking really, really good. We uh, got the handle in place, we uh, cleaned these threads up a little bit, got a little bit of uh, extra epoxy out of them. This uh, nickel silver hardware looks really nice against this beautiful burled piece of, uh, of, of wood here that we're using as the real seat. The, uh, the winding check is, uh, is adhered and uh, it's nice and even all the way around. So um, things are coming along really well. So at this point, the handle piece is 100% complete. Um, other than maybe a little bit of decorative wrapping that we'll do later on in the process. So at this point, what we need to do is we need to start locating the guides on the rod and we need to start putting these things in place. So where do you get this information from? Well, most um, commercial rod building supply businesses uh, publish generic rod spacing or guide spacing charts. Um, however, <clears throat> they, they might differ dramatically from what the manufacturer says. Well, I would always lean towards what the manufacturer says. So, um, you know, I downloaded a guide spacing chart from the St. Croix website because this is, of course, a St. Croix rod blank. And um, I copied down that information. And in, in those charts, it'll tell you what size guides to use. And it'll tell you uh, where they go on the rod measured from the tip down to the butt of the rod. So, for instance, this particular guide spacing suggestion from the St. Croix company is the first guide goes four inches down from the tip top, the next one is nine, the next one is 15, the next one is 22, and so on, all the way down to your largest stripping guide, which is, uh, you know, the closest to the handle. Um, and then the hook keeper will go somewhere, somewhere close to the handle wherever you want it, and uh, we'll, we'll decide where that goes a little bit later on. So um, we've still got our marks on this rod that denote the, uh, the belly of the rod as opposed to the other side, which is the spine of the rod. So we know, that we know where this rod wants to, to bend, ideally. So now we need to go about marking the rod uh, where all of these guides go. And we're just going to use, we're going to assemble the rod, and we're going to use a simple tape measurer and our china marker. And we're going to make these. Uh, we're going to make these marks, and then we can use our uh, quarter-inch tape and start taping them in place. And um, we're off to a good start. Now that we know roughly where our guides are going to go, and I say roughly because don't take the information that you see in a guide spacing chart as as gospel. Really, one of the benefits of of building your own custom rods or having one built for you is every rod bends differently, okay? Even two rods that appear to be identical from the same series, you know, minor fluctuations in the manufacturing process might make these rods simply bend at a different arc, which might really invalidate a lot of the measurements that you get from printed material. So we're going to go ahead and make our marks at these printed material based off of what the printed material says, um, because that's simply a good starting point but uh, we may be making adjustments down the road. What I've done is I've just laid out a simple um, steel tape here. And I've laid the, uh, the tip section of this rod along um, that steel tape, and I've put the belly marks up. That'll be the, the line on which we're putting our guides. And I'm just going to go along, and according to the paperwork, I'm going to make a little tick mark on the rod blank, um, exactly where it says each of those guides goes. And then I'll assemble the rod, and continue making the tick marks on the base section and then the rod is marked. Okay, so our fly rod now is marked where each of those guides go from the tip top all the way down to the largest of the stripping guides um, towards the handle. We've made little tick marks everywhere. Now we need to locate our, our guides on the rod and take them into place in preparation for wrapping thread on them. So, just briefly, when we, before we start locating these guides, I want to talk to you about guide straightness, okay? Because 
when it comes to fly rods and the really, really delicate tips that you have on fly rods, it becomes even more important that you ha are using a straight, or as straight as possible, snake guide. So what I want to do is, um, briefly, um, I just, I just want to talk to you about the, the, the different types of uh, quality when, when it comes to your snake guides and you're sorting through them. So here I, I kind of have a representation of the taper of a, of, of a fly rod. It's clearly exaggerated quite a bit. And here are three different classes of snake guides. Now, the top is a good quality snake guide. And I call it a good quality snake guide because this foot and that foot pretty much in line with one another. If you were to draw a straight line, they would be in line with one another. So in sorting through your snake guides, for instance, we have, I think, four of the smallest snake guides that go up towards the tip. I'm going to choose the absolute straightest snake guide for going at the top. Now, this one down here is still a decent quality snake guide because the, uh, the feet are, are, are straight, but if you look at it, they're not in line with one another. Okay, If you were to draw a straight line, they wouldn't these two feet are not in line with one another. This is still a good snake guide, and it's fine for putting somewhere here in the rod, but you want to, wouldn't want to try to take this one and put it way up at the tip top. You're going to end up with a bulge in your thread. This snake guide here, and I've ordered plenty of snake guides, um, and I've gotten some snake guides like that in the past. I've tried taking a pair of pliers and, and bending them around, but the alloys that are, are typically used for these you know, the minute you start bending them, you might put a permanent kink in it at that point. You really have to throw it away. Don't use that. Um, your best bet is to really, uh, you know, purchase name brand snake guides from a reputable retailer. And if you do get some of these, you know, collect them up and just send them back periodically and say, hey, I'd, I'd, I'd really like a refund or uh, I'd like you to send me some straight um, guides in, in, in place of these bad ones.